tuning your generator head. If you've never tuned your generator head, you need to keep watching. So this is a typical generator head you'd find on any generator, whether you bought it at a Chinese one at Harbor Freight, you bought it off Amazon, or you bought it at your local Home Depot. Virtually any brand, it'll have a generator head just like this, and they all function the same way. This is, I'm not talking about inverter ones, but this is actually just a, a generator head. Ideally, you would have your generator running exactly at 3600 RPMs, and that gives you exactly 60 hertz. The problem is, this is a gas motor, and the more load and strain you put on it, the slower it's going to go, a little bit. It has a governor in there, but the governor is only good for 200 RPMs, 300 RPMs, somewhere in there. And then if it's way overloaded, let a lot of generators are built to size, so they don't put a way bigger engine than it needs, they put an engine as big as it needs. So when you max it out, it really kind of slows down no matter what the governor says. But we want to get this as close to 3600 RPMs to keep this at 60 hertz. But it's not going to happen. We're going to have to overrun the engine a little bit to, let's say, 3800 RPMs. And this will be up to 64, 63 hertz or so. And then as we load it, it'll drop down to our 60 hertz. So what I like to do is I like to take a generator and I like to either half load it or three quarter load it depending on what I'm doing. Since this is a customer's and I don't know what they load it on, I'm gonna say I'm gonna half load it. So this is rated at about 2200 watts. I'm gonna put on about a thousand watt watt load and I'm gonna set it up for there. And what you do is just adjust the engine RPM as it's running. And the best tool for the job that I found is this. This is a kilowatt meter that you're supposed to use it in your house and stuff like that to be able to monitor how much electricity you've used. But I've used it more on just telling my frequency and the watts I'm using. So it does a couple different things. I can plug it in, and these are cheap. These are like 20 bucks. I'll put a link below where to get one. But you plug it in, just fire up the generator, and it'll read your voltage. Voltage is good to know, but not that crucial. And then we'll go over to the hertz, and you'll see that it'll say 60, 61, 62, somewhere in there. And that's fine, but then we can also see the watts, and then I can plug something else into this and see how much of a, of a load I'm pulling on it. So I'll pull a load, I'll pull right around a thousand watt. If I had a twenty, uh, if I had a five thousand watt generator, I'd probably want to put at least twenty five hundred watt load on it. So this one, I'll put right around a thousand, maybe even fifteen hundred watt load, and I'll set it up to run dead on sixty hertz. So while it's running, the engine's completely warmed up. All generators will have usually a screw knob. This one has just a knob right under here that you can screw in and out and it fine tunes the engine and increases the RPM a little or slows it down. Some will actually be a Phillips screw or a flathead screw that you, you, you'll see it close to the carburetor. It's linked to the carburetor and the linkage of there. And you'll just screw that in and out. And as the generator is running with that load, you'll set it up to your 60 hertz. And then once you unplug everything, you'll notice the hertz will sometimes even, I've had generators jump up to 65 or so. But that's fine because that's no load. Once you plug something in, it, it instantly drops. But then once you fully load it, let's say this one's at 2200 RP, uh, 2200 watts, um, you'll get a little drop off. So I'll plug it in. You'll get 2200 watts sitting in there, and it might drop to about 58 hertz or so, and that's fine. I just don't want it to drop too low. So you, these generators, it's a happy medium. Now, if you if you know you run a set something all the time, which most people don't, but if you do, if you run uh, one thing off this and it runs, you know, and it runs 1200 watts. Plug that in by all means and use that. Now, there are a couple other tools that are also cheap that you might get a little bit more um, use out of, you might like a little bit better. One is an hour meter tachometer. And this you can do about the same thing, but you do it from the generator itself. So, this right here, and I'll put a link below where to get these as well, um, these are pretty cheap. You actually wrap this around the spark plug wire and you can mount this and this can be an hour meter too so you know how many hours are on your generator. But then you can set up your engine the same way where you can turn it up to the whatever watts you're loading on it. You set it up to run dead on 3600 and you'll be at your 60 hertz. Or the, uh, the final method that there is is actually a AC clock. So you take an AC clock with a second hand and you plug that in and you have to watch your uh, a, another watch, and you watch that, and this runs off hertz. And so when that goes around, so in one minute on a regular watch, if this went 62 seconds, it's running at about 62 hertz. If it went 58 seconds, it's running at 58 hertz. So it takes a little bit longer with this, but you can do it with this as well if you don't have any of these other tools. Just use an AC. 
So you can see that it's running at 60 hertz with no load. That's where it was set up from the factory. Once I apply a load, it drops down to about 58 hertz. So I adjust it. I want to get it between 60, 61 hertz with the load that I determined that I want to run. And once I unplug it, no load, now it's jumping up to about 62 hertz, about 60 running. Here I just show that, you know, the uh, 3600 RPMs is the same as 60 hertz. And here I plug in a, a heat gun, about 1500 watts. So the generator's rolled about three quarters of the way and we're running at about 59 and a half hertz or so. As you can see, it's a happy medium. You have to kind of choose where you want it to be. You don't want to overrun it on one side and not the other. And so that's usually why I choose about half for customers. If they don't know what they're usually running, I usually like to ask them what they're running and I'll set it up dead on um, for what they most commonly run. Um, like you saw, if I fully load this generator, it'll drop below to 58 hertz or so. And if I let it just completely idle, it's at 62 or so, 61 point something. So if you just plugged in something that's only pulling 100 watts, it's going to be a little above 60 hertz. And if you plug in something that's 2,000 watts, you're going to be below 60 hertz. It's a happy medium with these generators. And this right here would be your best friend. Um, I like to load test with these halogen lights that are 500 watts a piece because or like a blow dryer or something else like that, something that gives a, uh, a huge load without being something like a, a motor. If you run like a drill or something to do your tests on, drills, electric motors will actually feed a, um, a frequency back in and it can mess with the, the reading a little bit. You'll see it fluctuating. Um, you'll see that it jumps, you know, all over the place. So sometimes electric motors can mess, especially dirty electric motors can mess with your, your reading on this. Not a big deal. Um, these only like to run about 15 amps. Um, anything over it starts flashing, freaking out, and over 20 amps it'll blow this up. How do I know? I've blown it up a couple times and I've put it back together. It has a little thermo uh, fuse in here that melts and you got to re-weld in a few thermo fuse. I've got, done it so many times I just got a, a wire straight in there. But um, use a uh, light bulb, stuff like that. If it's over 15 amps, you know, just plug something into here, write down that it draws 10 amps or whatever it is, a, a, you know, 500 watts and, and then plug it into a different one, but don't overload your, your little kilowatt meter. Definitely a must if you have a generator is to get one of these kilowatt meters to make sure you know exactly what you're running on your generator, everything else. Um, thanks for watching this video. I also have a video if you have one of these uh, noisy, noisy generators. Um, besides just building the whole doghouse around, I have a quick video on how to make those quiet and show you the muffler tricks and stuff like that. So I'll put a link to that one. So go to watch that one. Thanks for watching this. Thumbs up. Rate, comment, subscribe. See you guys soon. Bye.